We've already talked about the importance of the highlight reel. We've talked about the key components that should be in that reel. We've talked about what not to have in that reel. And if you didn't get those three things, you need to go back and watch video one or video two. But today our focus is let's get into, we're starting to create that highlight reel by position. And that is so important. Uh, you know, what should be in a highlight reel by position. Now, before we get into that, we've, uh, we want to reiterate that your highlight reel needs to hit. It has to hit in the first two or three clips. I've got to get me to watch the next series of clips. So again, as we start to talk about that and we get into those discussions, let's start with the forwards. If we're talking about forwards and the first two to three clips need to be a hit, I'm specifically at the top of our forwards. What is going to catch the attention of the coach with a forward? Yeah, I think this one's probably the easiest for for everyone. With forwards, it's scoring goals, right? It's scoring goals. Those first couple highlights need to be scoring goals. Now, those, you know, make sure that those goals aren't little tap-ins. If the only goals you have as a forward is just like you running up, balls going right across the goal, and you're just going up and tapping it in, I'd say we probably should look for something more valuable, right? Because in each of these, no matter what position we're in, let's take forward, for example, you have to show as much as you can in each highlight, right? So if I've got a highlight where, let's put two scenarios. One, I've got a highlight where I do a move one-on-one against someone, beat them, and then take the shot and score. Or another one where I've just got open field, open space, dribbling down, and I put the goal in the back of the net, right? Well, what's showing more? The one where I'm beating the player and then shooting and scoring, right? So We want to think about that when we're making this is, yes, we want to show goals, but a lot of times I've seen it where forwards will have every highlight to goal. And after the first four or five, it shows that you can score. It shows nice goals. And everything after that is kind of not that important. So first three goals, if you can show those different styles of goals, we like to show the versatility of different goals. If you've got one from far away, if you've got some from far away, you can show a couple, but you want to show different types of goals to start with. Christian, you want to? Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and first of all, you, you hit on you hit on a very important point. Gold nugget. OK, here, here's the gold nugget that Ryan just shared with you. You're a forward. Yes, we want to show our goals. But what did he say that was so important? The versatility of your ability to show, score goals. So if you are a free kick specialist and you do take the free kicks and you can show that 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 special free kick, you show it. I mean, I, I, I don't know a coach that doesn't want a free kick specialist. Okay. So that free kick, you, know, you, you guys know which ones you want to see. You love it when Messi's, you know, scoring a, a you know, that free kick. You want to see that when Beckham is scores that free, scored those free kicks. So that's great. But oh, I'm sorry. Are you, are you climbing the ladder and getting that header on the back post and, and burying that header on the back post? And then are you getting the one where you turn on top of the box and, and you're just skinning everybody on top of the box? But listen, these first three, these first three have to be absolute bangers, right? I, I think it was so important that you said that you're giving me the tapping goal. Yes, it shows your ability to get in position. I get that. I understand that. Okay. I, that, that, that's important too. But I can see a bunch of kids getting into right positions. I need to see that special, special goal. And those first three, man, they they need to be that absolute banger type of goal that we want to be able to see. So we move from goals and we see that happening in, in goals forwards. You know, whether you're playing a wing or you're playing the nine, it kind of kind of depend on the, and that type of thing. So let's play. We're, we're saying we're playing the 7-11. We're, we're the outside player. That, that maybe it's that goal where you're on the flank and you're able to cut inside and hit that ball. You're right on the right wing and you can cut inside and hit it with your left foot or you're on the left, you cut inside and hit it on your right. Fantastic. But the next series for maybe a wing is, uh, can you deliver the cross? Are you able to, are you able to beat the kid one V one, get down to the line and deliver the ball where it needs to be to the other forward? I can, can I see that dynamicness that's, uh, that's happening to be able to, to really showcase what you're capable of doing might be that next series of videos. So as we transition to this idea of forwards, those two first two to three are the goals, right, Ryan? Now yep. we, 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 you do have to break down into the specifics of what type of forwards you are. Even if you're, even if you're a nine and you can show me you posting up and you're receiving the ball on your chest or you're receiving the ball on a first touch and you can turn, you show that to me in a series of three 
quick ones, that's awesome. I want to be able to see that. Or you're showing me a series of crosses. That's awesome. Can you see, show me, you know, can you, what, what about showing speed? I mean, can you show the speed? Is, is that a highlight that is worthy? Sure it is. Absolutely. You're, you can, uh, you know, you get somebody that's putting a through ball and you're able to get in behind on the through ball and show that speed. Do I need to see 10 of those? No. But if I can see one or two of those, that, that again, you've got me for the next series. You got me for the next series. Um, you know, again, uh, anything else that you've seen in terms of, you know, what coaches, when, you, when you're doing analysis for, for the national team, what are some of those things that you see? Uh, that, and, and we talked about this last year, last week, when, when we were doing the live event, you know, Ryan, we talked a little bit about later in the video, should Fords be showing their defensive abilities? Yeah. Yeah. So like you said, after those first three, you kind of start to show a little more of your style of, of what you like to do. Are you a big player? Are you a fast player? What do you, are you getting in behind the line? Are you checking to the ball, making one twos, that kind of thing. But really it's if, keep it simple. Like you've got your, you've got your, your goals to start with. And then right after that, are you still, maybe you're not scoring goals, but maybe you're still creating key chances, right? Maybe you only had two goals. Okay. But, but now like, are you creating key chances? That can be you getting the shots off. That can be you producing some assists or some shots for your teammates. They don't. It's it's great if they score, but they don't have to score. If you're creating a, a key chance for them to be able to score, then you're still doing your job and you're still showing that coach what you can do. So I kind of go into those two things. The third thing after that, I'd say, okay, after producing chances, you can get into showing more technical skills. If you're just one v oneing a player on the outside on the wing. If you're, again, buying a player or just winning 50-50 balls in the middle of the field, anything that is showing physicality and speed up top is huge. And then moving in to later kind of down the line, then towards the, the – once we're done with all that, we can show possession and then we can jump into on the, on the defending side. So you can show a little more possession. Maybe it's not showing you necessarily the, – the chances aren't getting in on the goal, but – it's showing you moving into the right places and moving into the right space and moving the balls and, and working well up top uh, and getting the ball through the defense. And then the lastly, say, so yeah, defending. Defending is, and we did talk about this, it is a crucial piece to it. No one, no coach is going to want to recruit a lazy forward. Okay, yeah, they want you to be able to score goals for sure. But guess what? All the other players that are sitting in their highlight video, they're probably scoring goals too. Okay, so how can you dif differentiate yourself? How can you show that you know how to space yourself well, position yourself well? It is so important to be able to defend as a forward, to be able to positionally get in the right space and to work to get in those right spaces to put pressure on the back. So if you can show that and you're forcing anything where you're forcing a turnover, you don't even have to be the one making the tackle as a forward defending. If you can help be in the right position to to, to block a pass or narrow down that, that defense to where your team then wins the ball, a college coach is 100% going to be able to see that if you have that towards the end of your highlight video. Again, it doesn't have to be a lot, but if you can show a couple just to show that, okay, he put, he's going to put in the work and help us get a couple turnovers up there, it's a huge value add for a forward. Yeah, good stuff, Ryan. I, I love that, you know, how we're, how, we're, how we're actually trying to shape what the video needs to start to be like as, as we talk specifically about positions and the importance of positions. We're going to we're gonna skip the midfielders right now and we're going to go to the defenders because, again, uh, yeah, the midfielders will have a little bit more of some intricacies that we got to talk about. But let's get into the highlight reel with the defenders, okay? Again, what's the hit? What, what are the first three that we're yeah. getting on the defenders? Yeah, the hit. I've, I've actually heard, talked to different college coaches and, and two variations that I hear. One is, is just, just want to see you being big, right. And, and making that big tackle, making that big tackle. Um, anything that's showing, Hey, this guy can one V one defend is going to be huge. So if, even if you're on the, again, we we talk about defending, just like we said earlier, you got your, your outside backs and your center backs, but can you show like, what is going to make my jaw drop? Like, wow, that was a big tackle. Wow, he put that guy on the ground really hard. Now, you don't want to show any any cards or anything that's too, even if it's not called, you don't want to show anything that's too too much, too lethal as far as a foul, but you want to show you hitting hard. If that, if that player hits the ground when you make that tackle, you definitely want to be looking for that. But you also want to make sure 
even if it's a big tackle, you want to make sure that when you're closing down to make that tackle in these first two highlights, that is important. Okay. If you just kind of came in and got lucky, sometimes coaches can see that. And and this is where I say it, it, it differs a little bit from some coaches I hear. They want to make sure that when you go in to make that tackle in the very beginning of the, those first couple highlights, that you are closing down the space and closing down that that attacker properly. So I think those are kind of the two things. But but you can't go wrong with either of those if you show those first big tackles. I, I think I'd love to go back to Christian on this because I, I want to hear your thoughts on this because I've heard this from a lot of coaches. And what I try to do is uh, the athletes that we're working with, we try to make sure that any of those big tackles you're doing, we want to show those big standing tackles first. If you can say standing, but you're knocking the other player down and you're winning the ball it, is way more valuable than doing some sort of, of slide tackle. And again, I heard this all the time growing up as a defender stay on your feet, stay on your feet, right? Because if you go down and you lose it, now you're down the ground. So slide tackles can be important, but I think overall you're making more standing tackles during the game. That's more the value you're showing closing down the space. I would love to hear your thoughts on it as recruiting defenders from the college, from, um, from just a yeah college coach. Yeah. So again, you know, I agree with you, uh, you know, as a coach, I want to see the tackle that you gain possession and you start the attack out of the, out of the tackle. That to me is a more impressive tackle than maybe making a last ditch save. That might be, I don't need to see a bunch of those because if I see a bunch of last ditch save type tackles, the slide tackle, now I'm going to be questioning myself. Why, why is this? I'm seeing this all the time. Is this player out of position that they're, they're having to make slide tackles versus they, they are not properly closing, as you said, not properly separating the, the attacker from the ball by using their body properly. So to me, that's more important than, than actually the, the slide tackles. Now, if you have a great game saving, you know, goal saving type opportunity, fantastic, but I don't need to see a bunch of, them. it's more about that tackle and getting into the, into the attack after the tackle being big on what's happening. I do believe that, you know, a, a center back versus an outside back might be a little bit different in what you might be highlighting for me. A center back, I'm not opposed to seeing a couple of big towering headers clearing across you know that that that's something again that you're a defender you're getting up you're get you're winning that ball you're you're dealing with it you're dealing with the post up nine and are you able to shut down that post up nine i that that is something that i would love to see out of the center backs and seeing your physical abilities i want to see pace out of out of the outside backs uh, and then as we get into those outside backs not just from a defending standpoint let's talk about offense from our defenders if so again we're showing clips of you defending. That's important. This is this is one thing that kills me on some of these videos. I will get these these clips of defenders. I'm a defender, and the first three or four clips are you showing me you passing the ball out of the back. Okay, that that's not bad, but you haven't highlighted yourself as a defender. You you need to highlight you again. If you're a defender, your clip is about defending, and that's what you that's what you want to be recruited as. You need to show me in the first hit the defending. Is you playing out of the back important? Absolutely. But again, showing me a bunch of clips of you just clearing the ball isn't isn't going to get me excited. It's how you're able to defend. But again, center backs, can you win that big ball? And, and a center back, can you show me a range of distribution? Is it the short pass outside? Is it the short pass into the six? Is it is it it may be a combination with your with your keeper? Then can you show me that mid level pass, or can you can you target the nine, or can you target the seven eleven on a, a behind the line pass? That's what I'm looking for. Out of the outside backs, okay, are you able to close down space quickly? And then yeah, in, in the recovery, but can you get forward? Are you showing me getting forward? I want to see my outside backs getting forward. Now that's what I want as a coach. Some other coaches might want you know the outside backs to stay more at home. Uh, so you have to have that mix. But this will go to my next point. If you're a four that likes to get, or if you're a defender that likes to get forward, then you should be targeting coaches that play that style when you're sending your video. So, it, you know, it's something we never really talked about, but, you know, it's coming up now is your, your video should be sent to the coaches that play the style that you want to play. Otherwise, you're wasting your time sending the video to a coach. Yep. That's a good point. Just, just like, 
video that they're watching your video, you, if, if they're on your list, you know, and, and Christian will have more details on all this, but you should be watching their video as well, right? It shouldn't just go one way. And we work with, we don't just work with youth players going to the collegiate level, but we work with, you know, players on, in, in the college to pros, all of those, right? And we had a player recently who was going to play, had an opportunity to go play in uh, England and she was looking they, she sent her highlight video off. They were interested and she said, okay, well, before I make a commitment or, or take this to the next step, can you send your video, right? Because it wasn't public. She couldn't watch it publicly. They sent their video and then she was able, she was able to then, to then kind of watch and see what level they played. But again, most of these games are going to be online somewhere for you to be able to watch and kind of get an idea of the style of the play. So that's a great point, Christian. Uh, and then, so I'll try to break it down and take what he said and just kind of put it in, a, in an order just to make it a little bit easier. But center backs, you want your big tackles, standing tackles if you can. Want to mix in some sliding tackles. Like Christian said, those are great. Uh, don't show a lot of them. If you can show, for example, let's say your left center back and the right center back, you know, a player comes down their side and you've got to come all the way across right? Sometimes that's where you, you kind of catch the forward at the last moment and there's a sliding tackle there. Use that. That shows a lot. That shows speed, athleticism, you coming in, making the right timing on the tackle. So standing tackles, as, as many as you can. A sliding tackle, you can you can mix one or two of those in, one of those in. The But then in the air is huge, right? So like Christian said, can you show someone trying to go over the top and you're heading it down? Can you show crosses, can you show corner kicks, crosses? In, I like, always like to do in-play stuff first, in-play crosses, and then if they're set pieces where you with you getting big and heading it. From there, again, if there are some 50-50 balls where a ball comes bouncing and you're, or it's just kind of some kind of scrap thing, right, where the ball comes in and you're just using your, your physicality to win the ball and start the possession again, that is huge. Again, in any of these, and we'll talk about this as an outside back now too, but in any of these as a center back, if you're winning the ball, if I'm heading the ball and I'm heading it to a teammate or or I'm heading it way out versus just kind of heading it right below or back to the other team, that is that is that's a big difference. Okay. If you if you and if you cut the highlight right as you're heading it, but doesn't necessarily show where it goes. It, it, it's it is it's assumed that that ball just went back to the other team, right? If if the coaches the recruiters watching that, so center backs, that's what I would say. And then towards the end, distribution. Some teams depends on the team is going to want to see you be able to to possess it in the back, right? And then other teams are going to want to see you be able to distribute balls over the top, right? We've had requests from college coaches depending on the player. They may send one kind of one style and not the other at first. The college coach will reach out and say, hey, this is great. I need to see a couple. I'm really interested in seeing a couple longer balls if you have any distribution there or or switching the ball. You know, if you're left center back and playing it all the way over to the right wing, do you have any of those? And then they update their highlights and, and need to send that along. So if you have that and you can include that, they're going to look for that. OK, so let's jump to the outside backs, outside backs. Like we said, like Christian said, those one v one defending, that's their some of their best best footwork guys that's going against you, right? They're wingers. Um, so can you one v one defend? But like we said, those first two highlights and even the first five, but really those first two before we get to the first five, can you show you defending? But is there any sort of transition, right? There's a lot of transition happening on the outside of the field. If you're an outside back and you can, someone's taking you on 1v1, you tackle, win the ball, but now you pass it to a center midfielder and you run up the field and then you get it back and now you're starting the attack and, and now you you show that transition play, that is huge. So can you show defending and transitioning into, into an attacking transition? Now you're showing more in each highlight instead of just a tackle you're showing way more of the game. So that is huge if you can do that in the first two. If you can carry that on more from the first two into the first five as an outside back, I would do it. They Coaches, recruiters love that. They love seeing you play on both sides of the, of the field, but also having that quick switch to say, okay, we're on defense and now we're on offense. That's a big deal for you. As an, you guys know this as, a, as outside players. You know how big of a deal that is. Show that. Moving from there, again, if you can show more, def, more de, anything kind of happening defensive, if you run out of the transition, 
transition plays, but now you can show different types of tackles, kind of like what we did with the center back, where if you're showing winning anything in the air, if you're showing tracking a player back and, and heading it out for a cross, anything like that, where you're just you're doing some well positioning, getting the ball out. And then from there, if you've got anything on the attack, where if you are a strong player that, that's going up a lot and getting good or not a lot, but if you're if you've got very valuable runs up the field and you're getting crosses in, show the show that as well. That is really a really big deal into the college world because you might not just be compete. Here's the thing with outside players. You might not just be competing as a as a as a right back. You might be a lot of times the 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 outside players, right back, left back, left wing right wing you're all kind of competing together in that in that outside space so you want to be able to show some things on the attack too because a recruiter might see that and say hey we don't just want you as a right back we actually see you more like also competing in this right wing space same thing it, it could go reverse the other way too but that's that's really really important so that's what i would say for the defenders when it comes to breaking it down more into a concise kind of structure Great stuff, Ryan. And as always, we'll we'll be around to to help and answer questions. Uh, you know, if, if you get into the Sports Rules platform, you get into Complete Player Pathway. The the mentorship that we can offer you guys to help you navigate all of this is, is invaluable. And that's that's part of what we bring to the table for you is the is the years and years and years of experience both as a college coach and now, you know, somebody that's been in the video industry, we will definitely want to be able to work with you. Okay, guys, now, now, Ryan, we want to get into the goalkeepers, right? The, the goalkeepers, we, we can talk about a little bit. We talked about you can add practice highlights, and I think that, that that's an important piece. Those shouldn't be the early ones. We want to talk about the big hits first. So when we start talking about the big hits for the goalkeeping, what is the first three to four that's going to get me to the next series of videos or the next series of highlights? Yeah, so that great question. Uh, goalkeepers, you know, there's a lot of different – types of saves that you can have, right? The the big bangers are the ones that you guys kind of think of, right? It's the ones you're thinking of. It's those big reaction saves where it's just like some crazy shot and you're you're, you know, reaching top bend to 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 knock it over the crossbar and knock it wide. Those big reaction saves, I'd say are, are where you want to start just because that's that's really showing a lot of athleticism there it's showing you yeah it, it, that's really what it's showing it's showing athleticism it's also showing a little bit of technical but it's really showing that athleticism and that's before anything you want a goalkeeper that's athletic because that's going to have those quick feet to be able to make those quick saves so that's where i would start moving from those what what are you going to show next right i like to show from there a couple the order for goalkeepers after that, it because it all just really depends. I like to start there, always have those first, but from there it can and vary, and and we'll we'll get Christian's advice here in a second as well from him. But from a lot of college coaches, you, you hear different things. It depends on what type of, of 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 goalkeeper they are looking for. But but when you go from there, you want to show anything. Still, you still want to stay on the saves. But if you've got if you've got some hard shots where it's not necessarily the quick reaction like last second saves, but you've got some where you're getting some good holds on it and you're holding on to it from a hard shot, that can be really good. The, the the other one would be anything coming in from crosses. If you're getting up, getting over everyone and getting that save, that's also a big one. And then the other one is how what, what is your decision? Can you show some some decision making? On, on closing down some angles and and, and, and making and blocking a, a save or, or, or someone coming one on one. But can you cut off? Can we show you cutting off angles and making good, good decision making on cutting off angles and, and blocking some, some shots? And then the last piece before I go back to Christian would be I like to show delivery at the end show all the different pieces and parts to, to saves first, all the ones, the four I just mentioned. And then from there, I like to go into delivery. Now that delivery is going to look different for most people. If you can show some, if you want to show a little bit de delivery, if you've got good groundwork, I know Christian like would, would love to talk about this, so I won't touch on it too much, but the ground game is very important for keepers these days. 
And then also, you know, you need to be able to show delivery as far as throws, punts, kicks. Again, don't take a whole lot of time of your of your video, but you want to show your strengths in that area. If you've got a punt that goes over, you know, half field consistently, show a couple of them so that you can show that that is consistently. It's not just a one fluke error. This you can actually hit it over the over the line consistently. Uh, same thing with a goal kick. If you can hit it consistently over, do that as well. And I'd say that's probably that probably kind of sums it up. Again, on the field stuff, if you got some some possession there, I probably you know if it's simple little passes on the ground with no pressure, you don't need to show that. But if you can show anything under pressure or if you can show you delivering a ball on the ground, like, you know, again, a cross field to someone and right on their feet, you know, show that. But Christian, I, I, I've heard you kind of touch on that before. So I'll let you dive into that. Yeah. You know, obviously distribution is a real important part of the game. You know, the, the modern goalkeeper is the 11th attacker. The modern goalkeeper is starting the attack. How that attack is being started is, is very critical in terms of play. Again, you, you talked about decision making with the ball once I've made the save. What does that look like? I will tell you, just showing me punts that are going to half field, don't bother. Right now, if I've got a, you know, and, I, and I know a goalkeeper that I tried to recruit, his punt is going 70 yards. You know, he's putting it 70, 80 yards. He can put a set ball 60 to 70 yards. That showing me that is, is important because that that is a tool that I mean, that that's a weapon that I can use from that particular goalkeeper that they have that ability. But if you're if your punt and your goal kick is the same as everyone else's, I don't need to necessarily see that if it's special, then obviously, yes, you want to show that to me if it's special. Now, you know, as, as we go into the other distribution, as you said, you know, playing with the feet is critical in now today's game. I will tell you as I'm watching goalkeepers, and this this is just me as a coach, and I think it's really important. Are, are you receiving the ball back foot just like I expect my field players to receive the ball back foot and, and able to? Because if I if I see a back pass coming to you and you're not able to receive the ball opened up and your hips opened up to receive back foot, I'm going to question you and being the type of keeper that I that I want. And I think a lot of coaches are, are looking for that. We need to be comfortable with, our, with the keepers to have the ball on their feet and what they're going to do with it. So that becomes really important. Uh, showing what you might do if you get the ball under pressure is, is really important. Again, I'll go back to, can you show me maybe a series of, 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 of a training session where there's some intensity happening? Is That's near the end of that clip. You know, the, the highlight, it might be, it might be, 10 to 15 seconds of that intensity that I'm able to see you in a training session that I might not necessarily see in a game session to reinforce your ability to stop shots, to be able to have your feet set those little things that are, are the little things that we're looking for from our, from our modern goalkeeper, you know, yeah. let me, let me touch on that Christian. Yeah. Just if you, if you show that and you put that practice session in there, like you're saying, it's got to be technical and it's got to be done the right way, right? Because there's a lot that can be shown there. And with a lot, with you being able to show a lot, again, it, it's got to be done the right way. So that's all I want to say. It Make sure your form and your technique and you've really been honing it in, working on it, if you're going to record that and you're going to and you're going to show that. So I'll let you go. So, you know, again, you, you have to understand, I, I'm going to reemphasize, what are the hits to get me to the next step? What are, And then, and then, showcase your strength. So, you know, Ryan, we talk a little bit about this within mindset and I talk about the mindset of the competitive player, you know, whatever video you're doing, whether it's the goalkeeper, the forward, the midfielder, the defender, you got to showcase your best. And when you're doing your best, that that's, that's what I want to see. And, and we want to, I want my players to always improve on what their best is, because as you improve on what you're really good at, everything else will rise to that. If you are only focusing on what your weaknesses are, then then yo you're, you're actually going to hurt yourself in the long run overall as a player. So I, you know, goalkeeper is that one. What are you really good at that you're going to showcase for me? I mean, if you're a little bit shorter goalkeeper, can you show that you can get up and and, and deal with saves? I mean, a national championship at the junior college national championships last last year, the, the one of the players of the tournament was the goalkeeper, but he was like five seven. He, he was a shorter guy, but he he owned his box. He, I mean, he 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 played much bigger than he was. So don't be afraid of uh, of your size as a goalkeeper if you can show you can play bigger than who you are. 
So mm-hmm. let's let's jump into the into the midfielders, right? The midfielders. There's so many ways we can go with midfielders, Ryan, and and the midfielders are so dynamic. You know, we can be talking about sixes, which are defensive middle fielder. We can be talking about eights and tens, the attacking midfielders. We can be talking about sevens and elevens, which are our wings that might be forwards or might be midfielders, whatever that looks like. I mean, there, there's a lot of ways we're talking about midfielders. And so, again, big hits for a midfielder, I think, are kind of defen- dependent on, on what type of midfielder they are. But these have to be your, like, top plays. What, what made them your top play? Can it be a can it be a banger goal that you're hitting from 30 yards out? Absolutely. Is it you finding that pass that's slicing a defense? Absolutely. Is it you making a, a great change of point of attack or, or dribbling? Absolutely. But again, the big hits have to be special for the midfielders because it's really it's it really it's it's that it's a hybrid of everything that we do within the midfield. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could show you. That's that's a great point. I could show you five different midfielders that we've worked with over the past year, and every single one of them would look different. And it, it comes down to their style. It, it comes down to what video has been captured. It all just depends. I mean, sometimes with a midfielder, you know, it, it just – comes down to how the ball bounced to you and what you were able to do with it in the middle of the field. So it, it can be different. If you're an attacking player, of course you want to show more of those, you know, are you creating, if you're going to list yourself as a center attacking mid, right? Of course, show chances, show chances getting on goal. It doesn't necessarily have to be you shooting it, but if you can, that's pretty good. I mean, part of a center attacking mid is going to be to help get some of those chances and have some of those long range shots. If you're a defensive player, you better kind of like we talked about with the center back. If you can show that, yeah, you got to be strong and you got to control the game. So if you can show anything where you're just knocking people, winning the ball, knocking people to the ground, winning anything in the middle, like that is huge too. If you've got shots there, even as a defensive mid from long range, yeah, show that too. The biggest thing with a midfielder is think about everything that is going into that, into that highlight. Okay, what is happening? Don't start off showing some, you know, don't, don't start off showing some long pass, any kind of distribution. It, you know, like a, like if you're if if it's a, if it's just you're receiving a ball, you have tons of space and you make a pass. Don't necessarily show that. If you've got a, if you've got a possession play where you're kind of just kind of moving the ball and the space, that's really crucial. Like possession and keeping the ball, it's a big part of the game. But if if you can have more dynamic plays in the beginning to show that speed, agility, physicality, IQ of the game, all the technical abilities, ball control, if you can show as many of those in one highlight as you can, the more you're going to hook a coach, right? The more you're going to hook a coach. Think about, again, we think about the top players in the world. Why do we love watching them? Because it's not just one thing they do in one play. It's multiple things they're doing in a play. So, can you show that again? It's going to differentiate between between all of it, but show the the shorter, quicker stuff first. The more dynamic, the more hits that you can show in the beginning is going to be crucial if you're more of an attacking player. And then to to Christian's point, show your strengths. Show your strengths. If that's you, if you're just a big physical guy and you win everything, you know, and you can take on multiple players on that, show that. If you're really good ball control, really good at your feet. And, and and you're you know beating a player dynamically on the dribble, show that. If it's a great pass, you know threading the the defensive line, show that. But think about each highlight and think about okay, how many things am I showing here? Okay, I'm showing a good pass. I'm showing a good first touch out of the air. I'm showing I had to turn and have the vision to find that player quick. Think about those things and how much you're showing in, in each one. Yeah. So I I do want to I do want to stress again. I'm giving you my 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 thought process, right? This is the 28 years of, of coaching college soccer, what I'm looking for. And, and we talk about these midfielders. I, I I do like, I like the seeing the clip that might be changing the point of attack, being under pressure and those types of things. But I don't want to see the back pass to the goalkeeper. I don't want to see the back pass to the defender. I need to see where you're special. You've checked your shoulder. You've received the ball. You might have been able to open up on back foot, and you're going forward with changing the point of attack. 100%. That's, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. That's the special change. Showing you playing the ball backwards to a defender, changing it to the keeper. Sorry. 
that's a dime a dozen. Every midfielder should be able to do that. And, and they do that because that's safe. I think, you know, can you show, and then show me consistently. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I can take the ball under pressure. I'm a big, big, big guy. I mean, we'll spend our first, we'll spend our first week of practice all receiving back foot. All of our rondos are receiving back foot. All of our pattern plays are receiving back foot. If I can see that you're already receiving back foot and be able to get the ball forward into dangerous spaces, I love that from my, from my midfielders. I love that from all my players, but the midfielder that has the ability, as you just said, to get dan- get the ball into dangerous spaces, that's what you need to highlight as a midfielder. So no matter whether I'm a 7'11", you know, which can be a midfielder or slash forward, whether you're an 8 or a 10 or even you're a 6, are you able to get the ball into dangerous spaces? Whether it's through dribbling, whether it's through passing, whether it's through combination play, whether it's a, you know, maybe it's a, you know, you're able to work with an outside back and, and, and do a little rondo that gets you out of, out of space and gets you into dangerous spaces. That's what we're looking for. How do you, how do you clog up the middle and maybe make some great defensive play? But more importantly for that midfielder, a defensive play into transition into the attack right away. Mm. That's, that's yeah. what I'm really looking for. I like um, how you put all that. Yeah. It, it's how, how are you, how are you dangerous? You have to show yourself being dangerous. You, a lot of midfielders can show themselves keeping the ball and being safe and, and moving the ball through the midfield. But how can you show that you're different and that you're dangerous and that you're something special? Yeah, that's a good way to yeah. put it. So this kind of wraps up, you know, we've given you guys, and listen, we've just, we use an analogy. We've hit the tip of the iceberg on this. This is to just get you guys an understanding of the importance and the power of video in the recruiting process. And, and obviously, we, you know, the video one, we re- really talked about why video is important. And, and in video two, we talked about the components that you should have in your video. And and we talked about you know what, what you need to keep out of your video. The, it's just as important what you don't put into your video as what you are putting into your video. And, and to, in this video, we, you know, we, we talked about how do we break down the positions and the importance of positions and what all those are. So, you know, the, the next piece is, you know, we're going to do a live event in, in about a week or so, Ryan. We're going to be having a live event where it's just come in and, and maybe some Q&A. You've got questions for us. You've watched these videos. You want to, again, get that, that mentorship. I, I believe that mentorship is so important. Who are you listening to? You know, I, I, I'm not saying don't listen to, you know, your your teammates are the parents of, of your teammates or that, that have gone through the recruiting process. I'm not saying that, you know, they can't give you valuable information, but I really believe mentors should be people that have been where you want to go. Right. Ryan is, is, he's built this platform and, and we'll go into that shortly. He's built this platform about helping you do the videos. I have been a college coach for 28 years. I've been recruiting. I've seen, I've seen the progression of what's happened in the world and how we do recruiting and why videos become so important to how we are using that video and, and how you create it. I, again, Ryan, I'm, I'm going to say you don't have to play in the top leagues to get recruited. You just have to have top quality video to help you get recruited. So yeah. listen to me. It, it's not about playing in you know, the alphabet league that's going to get you recruited. It's about what video you can put forward that's going to get the attention of a coach. And and then, then there's so many opportunities out for you. Yeah. And I'll say this. Everything we talked about in this video is about what Christian just said. But it, but this is the everything we just gave you is the ideal situation, right? Ideally, if you have all this video, use this. There's athletes we work with all the time that may not have certain pieces of that video that they can use, but you've got to get, and, and you can't always wait for the perfect time and the perfect moment to get your video going. Okay. You've got to get something going and out there. You can update it along the way and make updates, but it's never going to be perfect. Okay. You're not a professional player. You're not going to be perfect. And, and so just keep that in mind that sometimes people wait to have the, the perfect game or the perfect, and that doesn't always happen. So just need to put something together um, that can show you at the, at, at the best light and everything. Again, we just showed you is ideal. If you're missing a thing or two, you can still put a great video together and, and you can still make recruitment really, really powerful for you. So great. So 
we're going to have a short little bonus video after this for you because I, Ryan, uh, you know, in the bonus video, we're going to talk a little bit about sports reels. So thank you for being part of our video series, video one-on-one -on -one and getting recruited. How, how do you use video to get yourself recruited? And, and, you know, I want, I want to share with you guys in our next bonus video specifically about sports reels and how do you take everything that we've shared with you over the course of these last three videos and be able to actually create that video using technology that is going to help you and, it, and more importantly it's going to save you time so ryan until our, our next bonus video it's been great being with you again today